Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm Rhett with Section 8 Real Estate Investing. Today I want to talk to you about something near and dear to my heart. I want to talk to you about something that pisses me off when I hear it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to the channel. We have a lot of cool stuff coming out and I want to make sure that you guys don't miss anything, especially if you're into uh, what we got going on. Alright guys, so today I want to talk about the difference between a slumlord and a landlord because there is a huge difference and if someone calls you a slumlord, it should piss you off. I'll tell you why. Now, in the business of Section 8 real estate investing, okay, there is a bad stigma. There's a bad stigma uh, revolving Section 8 tenants. There's a bad stigma revolving uh, uh, Section 8 landlords, okay? It's kind of like this uh, poor, uh, you know, people that invest in Section 8 real estate are taking advantage of poor people. That's what, that's, that's pretty much it. And it's the furthest thing from the truth. Now, let me tell you why that is. Section 8 property in the United States is incredibly, incredibly important. There is a affordable housing crisis that is going on throughout the entire country right now. If you haven't realized that, you have been sleeping, uh, you have not opened your eyes, you haven't gone online, you haven't gone on Zillow, you haven't seen what housing prices are doing. All that that's doing, guys, when the housing market continues to do this, it's isolating people, okay? that you have a group of people that cannot afford to rent, you have a group of people that cannot afford to buy, all right? It is, we are just separating the wealth divide. The wealth gap is growing, 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 okay? Um, and there are people at the bottom of that who are getting crushed. Now, the government sees that that's happening, and what they're doing is they're incentivizing investors like you and me and making it not glamorous, but they are incentivizing programs that are going to allow us to help ourselves and help these people as well as help the government, okay? Section 8 real estate investing is about a good investment for you, but it's also about helping those less fortunate and helping those in underserved communities that need housing where there isn't one, any, okay? Now, slumlord versus landlord. If I hear the term slumlord, I get pissed off, okay? I'll tell you why. Because I know some slumlords and I only know them because I've bought properties from them. There was about a year and a half ago where I started looking into buying properties that were already cash flowing. And if you've seen some of our videos before, you'll know that I've talked about the difference of buying a property that's already cash flowing versus buying a property from scratch and cash flowing it yourself, building it up, rehabbing it, doing all the work. So when I first got into looking at properties, paying a little bit of a premium to buy a property that's already cash flowing. I went to a bunch of different owners' houses that already had tenants in them. One of the first properties I went to was an older woman whose parents, her, her parents, were sleeping on the floor of the living room. She had three kids living in the home as well. They were all in one bedroom. It was a two bedroom home. There were three kids, different sexes, two boys and one girl living in one bedroom. The grandparents of those children were sleeping on the floor on towels in the living room, and the mother had her own room uh, with a huge hole in the middle of the floor, okay? Uh, there was a crawl space under the house that you could see because there were holes in the floors of five rooms where you could see right down uh, into the underneath, uh, the dirt underneath in the crawl space. The sewer pipe had broken from the toilet so every time the toilet was flushed, uh, feces would go underneath the house and come right up through those holes. There were rat holes that were this big in almost every single wall that you could see. Um, the electricity fluttered, even though they paid the electricity bills every single month. And I remember saying, why won't you, t why won't you turn this landlord in? Why won't you call HUD? And the response I got from the mother was, I don't want to lose my voucher. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to upset the landlord. Guys, I wanted to start crying. That was the worst thing I've ever heard. It was some of the most disgusting stuff I've ever seen, so I took care of it, okay? Because I didn't want to see that family there anymore. I took care of it, I called HUD, Those, that family was taken out and put into another place right away. Now, my point is, that property was cash flowing for $850 a month, and it just, Things had gone bad pretty quickly and there hadn't been an inspection in 11 months. Now that inspection time was coming up to where HUD would have gone out and shut that landlord down and ceased payment on his rent until he made upgrades. But nobody should live in that for a day, never mind 11 months. 
there was a huge difference between a slumlord and a landlord. That owner of that property was a slumlord. Now, a landlord takes care of the property. A landlord is what you guys will be when you get into Section 8 investing because you'll do stuff the right way. And that's what I always talk about in my videos, guys. Set up these properties like your grandmother's moving in. Take care of them like one of your loved ones is moving in. It's not all about dollars and cents. And if it is, get off my channel, okay? This is about making money. It's about a good investment. It's about taking care of people. These are people's lives, okay? You have to understand that when you get into real estate. It's not about screwing people over to make a dime. It's not what it's about. It's okay to make money, but you have to be respectful and you have to do it the right way. It's why I talk about it in some of these videos. Pay a little extra money to get things done better, okay? It's nicer for the tenant, they'll keep it nicer, but it's also nicer for you. Your property appreciates better. Your property's worth more money, and you don't have to spend more money to fix it year after year after year. Spend the money up front, guys. You know that that's a recurring theme in some of these videos, because that's what I do, it's what I believe in, it's what I was taught, that's what I do, and I see, the, uh, I see what, what I get from that. It pays off, guys. So, don't be a slumlord. When a tenant calls with a, with a maintenance issue, get out there and do it. Be a landlord. There is a difference. A slumlord is just there to cash the checks every single month, right? They don't care about how long a tenant stays. What a lot of slumlords don't understand is, if you take care of the property, it never gets bad. And a tenant stays there for years. I've had tenants in some of the properties I own, from the second I rehab them, I haven't heard a peep out of them. Some have never even asked for maintenance. Not one thing because you give them good stuff in the beginning and four years later, there's no problems. I've bought properties over the last couple of years where I have inherited tenants who have been there for 15, 20 years who have needed some things changed and fixed. And so I'll do that because I know they love that house. If I keep them in that house for another 20 years, they're gonna be happy. They're gonna have a place to live. They're gonna have a place that they can call their own, that they appreciate, that they respect. But at the same time, it's, it's good for me too, because now I don't have to worry about vacancies there, right? Now granted, anything can happen. Any property can, can, can become vacant at any time, but it's all about doing everything you can to avoid those vacancies in the first place. Because like we also talk about, guys, there is, a, there is a, uh, an understanding of you guys watching this um, about holding costs. Every month, every day a tenant isn't in one of your properties, it's costing you money, right? We wanna limit that. We wanna make sure that all of our stuff is occupied 100% of the time or 95% or, or of the time. Everything I tell you in all these videos is to try and help you get to that point. Landlords, guys, have 95, 100% occupancy. Slumlords do not because as money gets pumped into some of these areas where Section 8 is booming, 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 it's, it's creating a supply of Section 8 properties that's better than ever. Now you might say, well, I don't wanna to go to an area where there's a ton of money being pumped in by other investors, I'm gonna to have to compete. Guys, when, there are, when there's more money coming in and these properties are getting nicer and nicer and nicer, but the demand for the Section 8 properties remains the same and even grows, especially with a pandemic when people are out of work, right? Unemployment numbers are so high. The government needs to continue to bump up incentives for, for investors like ourselves. So what does that mean? It means rent goes up, rent goes up, rent goes up. The government will pay you more and more and more money. So guys, do the right thing. Take care of your properties. Spend a little more money up front. Don't be a slumlord. If you have Section 8 properties and this word doesn't piss you off, guess what? You're a slumlord. Change up the way you're doing stuff. Guys, thanks for watching. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave your comments, I'll get to all of them. I appreciate your time, we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.